The lungs are the large organs of respiration that take up most of your thorax. They are paired and structurally similar to one another. Today we'll look at the gross anatomy of the lungs. In previous videos we covered the anatomy of the tracheobronchial tree and the hilum of the lungs. You might want to check them out too. This video is sponsored by Kenhub. Stick around to the end to find out more. The lungs are roughly cone-shaped, with an apex at the top and a base at the bottom. They have three surfaces, one which faces the heart, known as the mediastinal surface, one facing the rib cage, known as the costal surface, and one facing the diaphragm, known as the diaphragmatic surface. Remember that the hilum of the lung lies on its mediastinal surface. The lungs are broadly divided into lobes, with five in total. The right lung is the largest and has three lobes, one superior, one middle, and one inferior. The inferior lobe is the largest, whilst the middle lobe is the smallest. We can see two large fissures in the right lung. The first of these is the horizontal fissure, which runs horizontally around the lung, roughly in line with the fourth rib and intercostal space. And the second is the oblique fissure, which we can see starts down here at the inferior border of the lung and passes superior posteriorly to meet the horizontal fissure at the fourth intercostal space. It then continues upwards in the fourth intercostal space before slicing down and around the mediastinal surface of the lung towards the hilum. If we look at the right lung from its mediastinal surface, we can see that the horizontal and oblique fissures meet at the hilum. Looking at the left lung, we can see it's a little smaller than the right, and it has only two lobes and only one fissure. This is because the apex of the heart projects into the left side of the chest, reducing the space available for the lung. We can see this indent on the anterior border of the left lung where the heart sits, known as the cardiac notch. Like the right lung, the inferior lobe of the left lung is the largest. It's separated from the smaller superior lobe by the oblique fissure. Like the oblique fissure of the right lung, the left oblique fissure starts midway across the inferior border of the left lung and passes superior posteriorly. However, in this case it sits mostly within the fifth intercostal space until right up near the very top where it enters the fourth intercostal space. Again, looking at the left lung from its mediastinal surface, we can see the oblique fissure sweeps down diagonally across the lung and meets the hilum in the middle. You may occasionally see this part of the left lung referred to as the lingula, which is part of the superior lobe but is functionally equivalent to the middle lobe of the right lung. You may remember from the previous video on the tracheobronchial tree that the lungs are divided into a series of segments that act as the main functional units for gas exchange. The right lung has 10 segments, while the left has 8 or 9. We can see most of these from the mediastinal surfaces. They all have names, but that's probably a bit too much detail for today. Both lungs are surrounded by a double-layered sheath of serous connected tissue known as the pleura. The innermost layer of this, which is in direct contact with the surface of the lungs, is known as the visceral pleura, whilst the outermost layer, adhered to the internal thoracic wall, is the parietal pleura. These pleural layers join one another at the hilum of the lung. Between the visceral and parietal pleural layers is a potential space known as the pleural cavity. This space is filled with around 20 millilitres of pleural fluid, which allows the lungs to slide over one another as the chest moves during respiration. There is a negative pressure within the pleural cavity, which essentially suckers the two layers of the pleura together, holding the lung inflated within the thoracic cavity and keeping it in close contact with the internal chest wall. Now, we've covered a lot of anatomy in this video, and I'm sure you're looking for a way to consolidate the knowledge you've picked up. Lucky for you, I've partnered with Kenhub. I've been using Kenhub since I was a medical student, and honestly think it's one of the most valuable anatomy learning resources out there at the moment. I read Kenhub articles when preparing all of my scripts, and reference their videos and diagrams when animating my own content. Kenhub Premium comes with structured study units, for example this module on the anatomy of the hip, each study unit contains detailed video tutorials, all with transcripts, closed captions and speed controls, space repetition quizzes that are an effective, evidence-based way to memorise key topics, a dedicated exam mode which mimics test conditions to help you prepare for your med school assessments, and my favourite, the custom quiz tool which allows you to build quizzes based on your personal weak spots and revisit them later.
You'll also get beautifully illustrated atlases, muscle anatomy reference charts, and access to Ken Hub's Anatomy Geeks, a 24-7 chat with trained anatomists to help answer your anatomy questions. I've used Ken Hub myself for many years, and if you want to try it too, there's a 10% discount for more than skin deep viewers through the link in the description. Go check out Ken Hub now and help support the channel in the process. This is the last of a three-part series on the anatomy of the lungs, so if you missed the previous instalments, don't forget to go back and watch them now. In the meantime, I hope you learned something and have a great day.